uh, I've told bits and pieces of my story uh, throughout the streams, but I've never kind of put it all together. And uh, I'm going to try to keep it in short without very many details because it's it's a lot, uh, a lot of trauma. Uh, don't feel bad for me though, because I've uh, I'm better now, and uh, I had good times in between traumas. Uh, I had a lot of good times, but um, right now I'm going to talk about the parts that weren't so fun. Um, to start out with, I uh, felt alienated from my family as a young child, and when I asked why, they told me that uh, I was an unwanted pregnancy, unplanned. Uh, I was a failed spermicide baby, and it kind of broke my heart, but, you know, anyway, what could, what could you do? That was, you know, that's what they told me. And uh, that probably was part of what led me down the road of depression and anxiety. I had night terrors and nightmares from as young as I can remember. And uh, just that was traumatic. I, I turned into a child insomniac because I was afraid to go to sleep. Um, there were. I could sense things around me, energies, maybe spirits, that uh, I shouldn't have known were there. Um, and, and that traumatized me too, because it just scared me and I didn't know what to do. Um, I was molested at some point between seven and nine. Um, and that just kind of passed. I just passed it off as a curiosity, but it, after I got grown, I realized it wasn't just that, but then at, at 13, I had my first real experience with alcohol. Um, last thing I remembered was turning up a bottle of whiskey and the next thing I knew, I was waking up with a boy on top of me. I was being raped for the second time. And that, that was pretty traumatic because I trusted these people. Um, any rape is traumatic, whether you know them or not. And the uh, crazy thing is, a couple of years later, well, actually about a year later, when I was 14, when I had my first pap smear, they found precancerous cells and told me that I would likely have to have a hysterectomy very young, and that if I wanted children, that I should consider having them young. And I don't think they meant as young as I did, but I took it to heart and I got pregnant at barely 15 by one of my rapists and married him. Uh, after the first baby was born, and things escalated into him abusing me mentally, physically, holding me down, beating me, pointing guns at me. Uh, and um, it was it was very difficult, but I managed. I ended up getting out of that, uh, but not before he he forced me to have an abortion when I was 16 with our second child and I was so mortified by it that I was pregnant again on purpose by the time that child was due and I got my son from that and uh, which he continued to abuse me through pregnancy um, after that child was born we separated and uh, a year when by the time that child was a year old I was divorced and had had a hysterectomy because the but the precancer cells had come back and uh, that's enough trauma in itself to really mess somebody up but it didn't stop there uh, about a year later I remarried and 
he turned out to be controlling and very controlling and manipulative and he beat me up a couple of times and he wasn't so nice to my kids he didn't exactly beat them but he expected them to act like adults and they were little kids and uh, he got mad at me one morning and told me if you and if you're effing brats and I said we'll see about that by noon that day me and my kids and all our stuff was gone in a U-Haul and we didn't go back um, after that I met my third husband who was about eight years younger than me and everything was all fairy tales and unicorns for a little while. Um, we had had some back and forth issues, but you know, we, I, I was, I was convinced we could make it. And he turned out to be a secret addict and we didn't make it. Um, one of, the, one of the traumatic things that happened during that marriage was that we had a pond behind the place where we lived where we could go fishing and there was a boat a little aluminum boat that was actually belonged to me that I got from my dad it was the boat my daddy took me fishing in when I was a little girl um, and the rules were no neighborhood children allowed in the boat without their parents telling you face to face that they have permission and not without a life vest. Well, you can guess what happened next. He didn't follow those rules and two children ended up drowning in my backyard. And I, I get goosebumps thinking how easily it could have been my own two children. And um, the marriage pretty much disintegrated after that. Um, he, he couldn't bear to be there and he couldn't take care of us. Um, so I, I, I divorced him so that I could find a way to support myself. Uh, Meanwhile, I mean, I've been in and out of counseling and therapy since I was 12, and I'm 50 now. Uh, taking medications for depression and anxiety most of my life. Um, and then there was the next relationship um, where we, we had our cycles, and he was, he was an addict to... Um, that, that didn't help things, but he wasn't, he wasn't as bad of an addict as the other one, I don't think. But I don't know, at some point, where does it matter when you're on the other end of it? Um, but that, that breakup was, was traumatic to me. I went through a lot during like the year prior to that breakup. And I, I wasn't ready to let it go. I, I, I still had the want to to try to make it work, and he didn't anymore. You know, my grandson was born a micro preemie, one pound and six ounces, and we were told repeatedly that he wasn't going to make it, but he did. He's and he's doing great. He's 11 years old now, and just a great kid all around. Um, I lost my house. I had to give away my horses and uh, get rid of all my yard birds and a lot of pets and stuff. And I don't know if I said that already. My father died that year. And uh, I was just a mess. Uh, I was a mess. And uh, that's where Jamie injured my life. We were talking before the stream. We can't remember how I initially met her, but. I ended up having some sessions with her and it helped me more than any kind of therapy or counseling I've ever had in my life. Um, since then, I've spent about 10 years alone, but I think I've needed that time to, to heal because it's, it's been a few lifetimes worth of trauma and grief all, all in one. 
and the, the culmination of things just really knocked me off my feet for a while. <laughs> well, I, I've had a lot of hobbies over the years and whatever I'm into, I'm way into it. Like, uh, I couldn't just have a few chickens. I had to have over a hundred and several different varieties of little fancy, frilly, fluffy chickens like you would have for uh, 4-H showing and uh, little feather-footed ones and, oh. <laughs> and when I had horses I couldn't just have a horse I had to have another one and another one and another one yeah, yeah and, and then I had to juggle three or four different part-time side hustles to support them work with the farrier to get their feet trimmed and <laughs> uh, babysit somebody else's horses to uh, have money to buy feed and you know, pasture off of a neighbor and it, I, I had to give them up when I the last time I moved and I cried like a little girl but I don't miss the work it involved I'm, I, I do miss them and get sad when I think about it but I don't miss the work it involved I really didn't ride much. Um, I mentioned the last time I moved, and uh, it was really hard on me. A lot of things happened within about a year. Uh, my grandson was born premature and had a lot of problems. Uh, we didn't know for the first couple of years if he was going to survive. He did. He's he's good. He's like 11 now. So. But, and he, he's on the spectrum. Uh, but anyway, and my father died and I lost my house and I had to give up my horses and I had to move into a crappy trailer from, from my one and only brick house. And, and my long-term relationship came to an end. Uh, and it's just a lot all at once. I moved here and I, I laid down and cried and I didn't get up for a couple of years. And it, was, it was really hard to just keep going. And uh, the fish do keep me going, give me a reason to do things. You definitely gone through a lot. It takes time to get up from something like that. Proud of you for doing it. Well, I'd had plenty of trauma before that, but all that all at once, that it, it really took a toll on me. And I've struggled with depression and anxiety and, and stuff all my life. Uh, I had night terrors as a, as a child um, to start with, and an alcoholic father, and. Uh, a long, long, long list. Uh, not to mention, I, I had uh, precancerous cells, cervical, so at, at, at 14 years old, and I went ahead and had uh, had babies young. So I was a teen, teen mom, and had a hysterectomy, two kids, and a divorce by the time I was 19, and had been a victim of life and had been raped and so then I had uh, another marriage that uh, just didn't work uh, we stayed married a year I stayed with him another year and then I left and, and that was that uh, he actually took one of my fish tanks like picked it up and dumped it out the front door fish, tank, rocks, everything. And that hurt. That hurt so bad. Ooh. But anyway, uh, married again, thought I was happy, but you know, I found out it was, and, uh, he had, he had real addiction problems. Um, and I just couldn't deal with it. 
says. Um. Well, that's the year out of those situations. It's hard because you get into yeah. this loop and you feel like you need these people in your life. And that's the hardest part, really, is to know that you don't you don't need them. You can love them from afar. Yeah, that, that is just, Take care just, of you. It's just how it had to be, you know, getting to the point that I had to put my kids first and yeah. did what I had to do. Yeah, people are a great source of, a, of disappointment and uh, I've learned the hard way not to have expectations of, of others. I can only have expectations of myself because that's the only person I can control. I've, I've always had a, a love for animals, um, any kind, uh, from roly polies to horses. <laughs> um, uh, I'm lucky I've never had a serious uh, addiction. I guess my kids were a lot of motivation to, to keep me going at a, at a younger age. I could have easily fallen into that had I not had them to put first. Yeah, yeah. it's nice to hear you had something to keep you going. Yeah, I've never had this many tanks at once, but I've, um, I mean, I, I always had like one or two or three, maybe, even if it was just a turtle and a catfish or 125 gallons worth of in bonuses. Uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty cool, but um, that was something that I shared with my ex and my last ex. And I just, after he informed me that those were his, <laughs> I said, like, oh, okay. All right, we'll see how long they live now. They didn't. There was like one left when I moved here. And um, I kept it till it expired. <laughs> and then I took down the tank and took a break for about five years. And then I thought, I just want one little tank for my bedroom. I want, I want that tank full of guppies that I've always wanted with plants. I want to do that. I want to figure out how to do that. <laughs> you know, and I did that. I, oh, that's awesome. I got, I, I got to do that again. <laughs> you know? I hope you know, I just imagine like a 125 filled with plants and guppies. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, had, I got them up to a 75 full of <laughs> plants and guppies. And uh, there's a video of that on my channel. But uh, the tank has my goldfish in it now. I moved the guppies out and I guess I bred so many of them I finally got bored with them and my uh, collectoritis got the best of me. Okay. But uh, I still have guppies. that bad. I got a pond in the floor behind me with my koi in it waiting for it to be warm enough to put them back out. I don't think I'm gonna, well I'm gonna try not to bring them back inside next winter. I think they'll be big enough to stay out. Okay. So they're, they're getting a little size to them now. I don't have guppies. I have endlers. Kind of the same in my height. Yeah. So I've got guppies. I've got uh Blue lobster, crayfish, uh, angelfish, a couple oddballs, one offs, where I had three of this or three of that, and only one is left. They're in with the angelfish, goldfish, electric blue caras, yellow labs, um, and a small young pair of convicts. They're like, this big around and they've already had babies. They've got like a giant cloud of babies. They've you know taken over the 
55. I had to move everybody else out because they 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 breed like crazy, huh? Yeah, I had heard they would, but I've never kept them before, and I didn't think they were even old enough. Fisher Mine says, I think all fish lovers are a little bit hoarders as well. Yep. <laughs> I, have, I do have those tendencies. Mm -hmm. uh, are the baby bed is coming. They are... I have... See, the crown tails are doing the best. Uh, the others are, I don't know what's going on. They keep dying off. Oh, I only got a few left of the other kinds, but I'm going to try some again soon. But I've got crown tails, but they're still teeny weeny. I need to grow a couple of months. Nano fish need love too. They all need love. <laughs> My mom also cleans obsessively every day. <laughs> I, I wish that was one of my compulsions. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. Like she'll she'll wash the dishes the next day, the same rack of clean dishes, she'll wash again. Like it's that kind of obsessive. <laughs> I use the dishwasher. <laughs> nope, not her. She has and to bleach them. everything. <laughs> she has to bleach them too. Like, it's, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> it might have a germ on it. <laughs> exactly. It, it was dusty. <laughs> and I definitely have hoarding issues, but I manage them with spring cleaning techniques my mom has taught me. I struggle with cleaning. It's like I, I end up moving piles of junk from one spot to another. Yeah. But every time that. I do it, I sift through it and make other piles of stuff to like take to donations. I make a bigger mess trying to clean things. <laughs> and then I slowly yeah. put everything back together. I don't know. That's I always make, make it worse before I make it better. Just how our brain works. <laughs> yeah. Once a year, clean out. I get started in one room and then I'm like overwhelmed and have to go take a nap. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> and then now my my attention span is like absolutely none because of watching just TikTok videos and YouTube shorts. Like, I'll be doing one thing and all of a sudden I'm doing another and I'm like, I have no idea how I got here. No idea. Yeah, a lot of days four o'clock will roll around and I'm like still sitting on the side of the bed in my pajamas staring at YouTube. <laughs> I'm a hoarder and I need help. <laughs> the first step is admitting it, you know? That's right. First, first step is acknowledgement. Shipping boxes. I mean, you can do something with it, then it's functional. <laughs> oh, I have lots of empty boxes lying around too. Right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, once they get dirty and get dog hair in, I'm like, awesome. I'm like, I'm going to use that. I'm going to clean out a cabinet and I'm going to fill this box up with stuff to get rid of. Six months later, the box is still sitting there, empty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get distracted. I go from this room to put something in that room and then I grab something in that room and do something with that. And I'm just all over the place. I guess it'll come together and get done one of these days. I like do one thing and then I need a nap, so. <laughs> that too. 
um, just trying to go through stuff to pick out stuff to get rid of is just it's overwhelming. It's like, I don't know what to do with this. What do I do with it? I want to keep it. And then the things that have memories attached to them. Those are But that stuff and not fish, I guess. I don't know. I, I collect old fish. I, I can't get rid of old fish stuff either. I have old ornaments that I'll probably never use again and can't make myself get rid of. You know, someday I'm going to paint that. <laughs> Five years later, it's still right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know, me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> a body double. Yeah, I've, I've often said that I need more than one of me to get everything done. If I could ever just feel like I was caught up, that'd be great. <laughs> 